What I'm really trying to do with this book is really show the positives of Greenwood and, and talk about the people of Greenwood who have changed and influenced this country. Hi, I'm Carlos Moreno. Um, I'm a writer, historian, and I'm the author of The Victory of Greenwood. You know, the reason I wrote the book is when I first moved here uh, from California, it was really the Greenwood community that um, opened its arms to me. Greenwood came and kind of gave me my first shot in my career. All of my first website clients were all in Greenwood. Um, so I built the first website for the Greenwood Cultural Center, the Greenwood Chamber of Commerce, the Mabel Little House, uh, the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame, the Oklahoma Eagles. So I got to know uh, all of those different companies in Greenwood and, and uh, nonprofits and, and, and the paper, of course, that was around at the time. You know, when I was freelancing for the Oklahoma Eagle, I had um, really just the honor of working with a lot of the Greenwood elders that were around at the time. Um, from Don Ross to uh, E.L. Goodwin Jr. Um, to Senator Maxine Horner and just um, just all the leaders in the community at the time and um, they taught me about Greenwood, about Greenwood's history before 1921, um, the history of the massacre of course, but even the, the history of Greenwood's rebuilding and uh, how it was a thriving neighborhood well up into the late 1960s. So the, the story of Greenwood just has stuck with me ever since. I've spent the last 20 years uh, collecting anything and everything I could ever get my hands on about Greenwood from books to documentaries to newspaper articles, photographs, everything. And so um, just spent the last two years working on this book and just hope that uh, that people get get to enjoy it and get to know a lot more about the sort of deeper history of of Greenwood. You know, to me, one of the, the most exciting and, and the most uh, interesting things that I discovered while researching this book is how, just how prominent women entrepreneurs uh, were in the Greenwood community and how much Greenwood embraced um, its black women entrepreneurship uh, community, almost. Um, you know, uh, they all knew each other. They all supported each other. The newspapers would praise black women business owners. And so I just really thought that was uh, a very unique and interesting uh, aspect of Greenwood. Uh, you had uh, people like Lula Williams, who is famous for owning uh, the Williams Dreamland Theater. Um, but in my research, I found, you know, she owned a chain of movie theaters. So here's one of the first um, people, not not the first black people, but just one of the first people, period, um, starting a chain of movie theaters. And we're talking about, you know, the 1910s, when the Hollywood industry was very, very new. Um, so she had Williams Dreamland Theater in Tulsa, and she had another theater in Muskogee, and another one in Old Mulkey. Um And even on top of that, she had two um, confectionaries, sweet shops. Um, and even on top of that, she also rented out um, part of her building to lawyers and other business uh, owners. Uh, we're here in 36 degrees north, uh, and we think of co-working spaces and sharing office spaces as a new thing. Here, here's Lula Williams doing that in, uh, you know, in the 19-teens and 20s. Um, so it was just so exciting um, to learn so much more about these uh, great historical figures in Greenwood history and, and kind of get a, a bigger sense of uh, what their lives were like and, and uh, everything they were, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about the book cover. Uh, it was designed by uh, Trey Thaxton, uh, who's done a lot of, he did the, the graphic design for Fire in Little Africa um, and he's in Fulton Books and a lot of the black owned businesses here. Um, so I was just so excited to collaborate with him and we chose B.C. Franklin for the cover of the book. Um, B.C. Franklin really to me embodies um, you know the the true meaning of the victory of Greenwood. Here's a uh, here's an attorney who um, you know um, was very very educated in in being an educator, in being a lawyer, um, 
and he had just moved to Tulsa. He had only been in Tulsa for a few months before the massacre occurred. And he finds himself um, in a position to where he really needs to defend the land of Greenwood from business interests and the interests of the city that want to take Greenwood's land and move the Greenwood community further to the north. Um, the important thing about Greenwood is that it was along the railroad tracks, which made it very, very valuable and, and a strategic uh, location from an economic development perspective. Greenwood knew that, of course, and they had it, and they built their neighborhood around that um, center of commerce, which was the railroad uh, at the time. And uh, Tate Brady and, and uh, other members of the Klan had conspired with the police department, with the National Guard, um, to plan this attack on Greenwood on, um, on the morning of June 1st, 1921. So what you see is a very coordinated attack among um, the police were involved, the National Guard is involved, um, the police deputized 200 people to loot and burn Greenwood. Um, and B.C. Franklin um, mounts this lawsuit against the city of Tulsa, against the mayor, against the city commission, against the police department. So here's one black lawyer who's taking on the entire power structure of Tulsa. And he wins his lawsuit. Um, and, you know, to me, nothing says victory more than that. Um, you know, to have one person making that much of a difference. It's because he won his lawsuit that the neighborhood of Greenwood was able to um, rebuild, that the residents and the business owners were able to keep their land um, and rebuild this community. Um, and so I just think that that's just such a powerful story. Um, and, and we don't often talk, you know, we talk about the tragedy of Greenwood, um, and, and certainly uh, we need to do that. We need to honor um, what, what a tragic event this was and what a great loss um, this was for its people and, and the fact that 300 people were killed, the fact that 1,256 homes were burned down. But I think that, um, you know, uh, and, and, and there's a, a hip-hop artist, Steph, Steph Simon, who says this in one of his songs uh, on his album, Born on Black Wall Street, he says, a battery doesn't work with only positives or only negatives. You have to have both. And so what I'm really trying to do with this book is really show the positives of Greenwood and, and talk about the people of Greenwood who have changed and influenced this country, not just the city, but um, the entire country. I mean, you talk about people like Lula Williams, you know, she was known throughout the country. Um, people like Susie Bell, who uh, had multiple restaurants in the community. She was talked about in, in newspapers all over the place, from Texas to Oklahoma to um, Kansas. People would come from all around just to go to her restaurant. You know, she was that well known and that famous. Um, you know, Greenwood played a, a huge part in the civil rights movement. Um, and so I take a, a big section of the book and talk about that history, because I think it's really important history that, that we need to know, and that um, certainly our, our, our young you know, students need to know their, their history, where they come from, um, that this place has a strong legacy, um, again, not just for the city, but for the whole country, and how many connections there are in Greenwood to not just uh, Tulsa history, but, but American history, just period, you know. Count Basie stayed in Greenwood and, and, it, and it defined his entire sound. Emmett J. McHenry grew up in Greenwood and developed the commercial internet system, the DNS system. You know, we can't, there would be no dot com, you know, today without Emmett J. McHenry. And here's uh, a person who is from Greenwood, but we don't, talk about his history, you know, so these are the stories that I really wanted to bring forth. You know, um, it, it's unfortunate, I think, that um, the 1921 Race Massacre Commission um, has had so many difficulties, has had so many opportunities to collaborate with the community, that, that um, opp these are opportunities that have been squandered. Um, there are members of the commission who don't agree that Greenwood should have reparations. 
Um, so there's really a lot of division uh, in the community about about the future of Greenwood, and and yet I see that there is still victory in Greenwood, and, and where you find it is in the sort of not necessarily the official channels or the official power structure of Tulsa, but again, just as Greenwood has always been, the the successes and the things that are really happening and really making a big influence are happening at the grassroots. You know, you have you have a project like Fire in Little Africa, who, um, you know, here's a, a former mansion that is owned by Ku Klux Klan leader Tate Brady and Felix Jones, NFL you know, player buys the mansion, creates it into an artist collective, and now their album has been signed by Motown, you know, so I think that's a great success and and sort of repeats this pattern of, you know, here are these uh, hip hop artists in Oklahoma City and Tulsa who are now going to be nationally known, you know, and that work, you know, came came out of came out of this place. Um, You know, and I I see different um, entrepreneurs Black entrepreneurs who are just making a huge difference, not just here in the city, but throughout the country. You know, um, Hank Bird just got his um, uh, series, Blurds, uh, on a major streaming channel. You know, so it's it's those kinds of successes. You know, Vanita Cooper with her sneaker shop, making waves, you know, all over the place. Um, so it's, it's, it's the business uh, owners of Greenwood. It's it's the stuff that's happening in the grassroots um, that are the real victories of Greenwood today, and that will continue on. Um, you know, well, well after all this centennial stuff, and you know, well after um, uh, you know any official you know um, uh, de- dedications or ceremonies or anything like that. You know, the people who are really doing the work on the ground. Um, are the real people who are building the victory of Greenwood even today.